What if I told you everything you've learned about kidney disease care is missing the most powerful part? Most doctors say manage and monitor, but I've spent almost two decades watching patients not just slow their decline, but actually stabilize their kidney function using four daily habits that take less than 30 minutes total. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And this is part four of our six ultimate kidney guide series. In the next few minutes, I'm going to share the exact protocol that's helping my patients achieve something many think is difficult, preserving and in some cases improving kidney function. And the foundation, self, sleep, exercise, love, and food. The four pillars that create an environment where your kidneys can function optimally. But remember, the most concerning reality that most people don't realize is over 850 million people worldwide have kidney disease and most don't know it. By the time symptoms appear, you've often lost significant kidney function. And that's why what I'm about to share could be very protective and life-saving. Let's start with the first part, sleep. The critical, important criteria that sets the foundation for not just kidney health, but overall all longevity. Sarah was a 52-year-old teacher who came to me because of her declining kidney function. Her GFR had been steadily declining for over months, and one factor stood out. She was averaging only four hours of sleep nightly due to work demands. What we focused on was prioritizing sleep hygiene as part of her comprehensive care plan. Over the following months, her kidney function stabilized and she even had improvements in her eGFR. The reason this is so important is because the research on sleep and kidney health is so compelling. There was a five-year study of 4,200 adults published in the Journal of the American Society of Nephrology. The researchers found that each hour of lost sleep was associated with a 1.19-fold increased risk of rapid kidney function decline. Additional research from large-scale studies shows there was a 432,000 person study over 11 years. And what they found was that poor sleep quality increased chronic kidney disease risk by 40%. And there are multiple studies that link sleep problems to faster kidney disease progression. Now, sleep app deserves special attention because untreated sleep apnea, it raises chronic kidney disease risk by approximately 20 to 30%, according to a 2020 meta-analysis in the American Journal of Kidney Diseases that looked at over 3 million participants. And if you're someone who your partner says you experienced loud snoring, they've witnessed you stop breathing for a few seconds, or you have excessive daytime fatigue, a sleep evaluation, meaning doing a sleep study, could be absolutely life-saving. Now, in terms of the self-principle for sleep, the evidence-based sleep optimization strategy is simple. Keep a consistent pre-sleep routine, 30 to 60 minutes before going to bed. Keep the bedroom cool, preferably 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and minimize light exposure. Practice box breathing, the 4444 or 5555, doesn't matter. But essentially, you inhale for 4 to 5 seconds, hold for 4 to 5 seconds, exhale for 4 to 5 seconds, and then hold for 4 to 5 seconds and repeat the process. And finally, limit fluid intake 2 to 3 hours before bedtime. The key thing here to remember is how long you sleep is important, but making sure you're going to bed and waking up at the same time. So sleep regularity is absolutely critical to overall health. Let's dive into exercise. Recent research has absolutely changed how we think about exercise for kidney disease. For years, kidney patients were often told limit physical activity, but current evidence suggests that this was way too cautious. So what the current research shows is there's a systematic review and meta-analysis of 10 randomized studies involving 648 CKD patients. This was published in the Frontiers of Physiology, and it analyzed exercise interventions anywhere between 12 to 24 weeks. And what they found was that aerobic exercise programs showed an average eGFR, which is kidney function improvements, of about 2.2 to 2.6 mils per minute per 1.673 meters square. The other part of this was that blood pressure, there were significant blood pressure reductions averaging 5.6 to 
systolic and 2.9 diastolic across studies. And they also saw reduced inflammatory markers like CRP and IL-6 in blood tests. So what is a practical evidence-based approach? Well, foundation is really on most days of the week, try to focus on simple things like 20 to 30 minutes of walking, swimming, cycling, start small. You could do two minutes, five minutes, and then make sure that you're adding resistance training, whether it's body weight, such as sitting in a chair, standing up like body squats or lifting weights, but add both strength and cardiovascular training. Now, always keep in mind, if you feel dizzy, short of breath, chest pain, stop, talk to your doctor, make sure that they're okay with you starting. And remember, this is more like a marathon, not a sprint. So start slowly and build. Let's get into the L part or love, which is really about how do we take care of self? How do we manage stress? How do we protect our kidneys? So one of my patients, James, and as always, the names have been changed. James was a 58 year old executive. He came to me with a poor kidney function in stage four, and it was steadily getting worse. So beyond his medical management, what I found was he was under tremendous work pressure and we address stress, relationships, basically trying to create time for himself as part of the strategy. And over time, same exact thing as the previous example, his kidney function started to stabilize. And the reason for this is the research on stress and kidney health is fascinating. Studies show that chronic stress can impact kidney health through elevated blood pressure, increased inflammation, and disrupted sleep patterns. And research on stress reduction interventions shows remarkable results. There's a randomized controlled trial of eight weeks of mindfulness-based stress reduction, also known as MBSR, involving 72 chronic kidney disease patients. And what they found was there was significantly reduced sympathetic nervous system activity. There was better blood pressure control with drops of eight points systolic, five points diastolic. Remember, a typical blood pressure medication will give you about those results. So how fascinating is that simply by doing mindfulness-based stress reduction meditation, you can actually get almost the same benefits as a blood pressure medication. There was also reduced depression and anxiety scores by 25 to 30% compared to control groups. And so what are some evidence-based stress management techniques? Well, daily practices, mindfulness meditation, it doesn't have to be long. It could be five minutes of just focusing on your breath. Gratitude practice. As you know, I end every video by saying, be kind to others, be kind to yourself. So gratitude practices identify two to three positive aspects of your day. Weekly practice, social connection, maintain relationships with supportive family and friends. Professional support. If you need counseling, please don't hesitate to ask for help. And if you ever find yourself in a really stressful situation, very simple. Inhale slowly for four to five counts. Hold briefly. Exhale slowly. You can do it as a box type breathing. You can do different forms. But all it is is focus on your breath. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. And what this does is it activates your parasympathetic nervous system. It promotes relaxation and recovery. All right, let's get into my favorite, the nutrition side of things. The 2024 KDGO Clinical Practice Guidelines now state, we suggest higher consumption of plant-based foods and lower consumption of ultra-processed foods in people with non-dialysis, CKD. This is a massive shift in the landscape of what is the optimal diet for chronic kidney disease patients. And the evidence supporting plant-based nutrition is quite strong. Research has shown that plant-based dietary patterns are associated with slower CKD progression. Higher plant protein intake correlates with better kidney outcomes. And this is compared to equivalent amounts of animal protein. And you also see that the more plant-based proteins and overall diets you have, you have reduced cardiovascular events in kidney disease patients versus animal-based diets. So why plant-based foods may help kidney health? One, phosphorus. Plant-based phosphorus is less bioavailable. It has 20 to 50% of the absorption compared to animal-based phosphorus. When it comes to food additive phosphorus, the additive phosphorus has nearly 100% absorption. But plants, they are amazing in being able to have all these health benefits and the phosphorus doesn't absorb. 
Then there's the fiber, which can bind uremic toxins in the digestive tract. It can help with blood pressure control, blood sugar control, and going to the bathroom regularly. And in terms of potassium concerns, what research shows is fiber in whole foods actually slows potassium absorption. And cooking methods like boiling can reduce potassium content by 50 to 60 percent. Now, processed foods and salt substitutes, those are always higher in potassium. And so remember, whole foods is what you want to emphasize. And when you're looking at it, grains, legumes, vegetables, you can use kidney-friendly cooking methods. And of course, fruits are wonderful. Just the big thing to watch out for is minimize ultra-processed foods with any additive phosphorus, processed meats, which are high in sodium, and of course, excessive protein from any source. So what's the protein concentration? 0.8 grams per kilogram per day of ideal body weight. If you have advanced CKD, sometimes meaning CKD4, CKD not yet on dialysis, we may even say 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram per day of ideal body weight, but you have to discuss this with your doctor. So when we start to put this whole cell framework together, remember sleep, prioritize seven to nine hours with good sleep hygiene, screen for sleep apnea, exercise, 20 to 30 minutes of moderate activity most days. Remember, you got to do strength and cardio. With love and stress management, practice daily gratitude, stress reduction, maintain social connections with food, emphasize whole foods, work with your healthcare team to make sure your potassium is monitored, avoid processed foods. And so when it comes to all of this stuff, just remember the most important thing is to get started and realize there is hope. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. This is part number four. Make sure you watch out for part number five, which is coming next. And as always, don't forget to express gratitude and kindness to others and to yourself by taking care of your health. Thanks so much. And I'll see everyone next time.